Hey YouTube, this is Alexander, and I haven't done a My Thoughts video in quite a while, and that's basically because I've been really busy with school. Uh, it's been hard to squeeze in on My Thoughts, but now that the semester is pretty much winding down, and there's finals next week, I have a lot more time, and I asked you guys on Google Plus and Twitter what you'd want to see from me in terms of a video, and one of you said that you wanted to see My Thoughts on Project Vi, so that's what this video is going to be about. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Let's go ahead and get started. So just a quick disclaimer, I'm not really going to be comparing pricing and, and coverage uh, between Project Fi and other networks in the United States since this is the only place where it's available. Uh, but I will leave some links down below in the description for you guys to check out if you want to check out some infographics or charts and breakdowns of pricing and comparisons between Project Fi and other networks. Uh, so definitely hit those if you guys want to. But anyway, Project Fi is essentially a project from Google to establish themselves as a mobile carrier here in the US. So they're gonna provide data, talk, and text for you guys. At least that's the idea. It's very limited right now, and I'll get to that in a second. But in order to connect, they are basically using Sprint and T-Mobile's network in conjunction with Wi-Fi networks spread out through the United States. Now their pricing plans are pretty cheap, I would say. Uh, they're kind of in the middle to uh, lower end of the pricing tier in the US. Uh, so it's basically 20 bucks for, you got unlimited talk and text, support in over 100 countries and international texting. Uh, and then the data is going to be an extra charge. So it's $10 for every one gigabyte of data. So say you only want two gigs and you want, of course, the unlimited talk and text and just the regular service that you're gonna get with the 20 bucks, that's gonna be 40 bucks total, 20 for the data and 20 for the regular coverage or regular service. So say, for example, you didn't use all two gigabytes that you were uh, paying for that month. Basically, it's going to come back to in the form of uh, money so that you can pay, uh, put that towards your next month's bill. So say you only used 1.5 gigabyte of the two gigabytes, it's going to come back as $5 uh, because it's basically one cent for every megabyte that's unused. So 500 megabytes would be 500 cents or $5 that would be allotted towards your next month's bill, which is actually kind of cool if you guys uh, are into that or if you don't use all of your data. Now, if you go over, they just basically charge you uh, on the spot for however much you do go over, I believe according to that same one cent per megabyte plan, which is actually kind of cool. I, I like that about it. Now, in addition to that, there are no annual contracts and there are no cancellation fees if you decide you don't want to be with Project Fi anymore. So moving on to some of the drawbacks of Project Fi or at least what I would consider to be drawbacks. Right now, it's super limited, and I think that's by choice, of course. They're not really marketing this towards everybody or uh, you know, mass adoption. They're not really trying to get mass adoption anyway. Uh, so you will need to be in an area where you have Sprint and T-Mobile coverage since they are using those networks. Uh, you also need to have an invite, which you can request uh, if you go to the site back here. I'll leave a link to this in the description, of course, if you wanna go and check it out for, of course, more information also. Uh, but you need to have an invite and you need to have a Nexus 6. So the phone, the Nexus 6, in case you guys weren't aware, is like 700 bucks. So if you are looking to join, you either need to already have a Nexus 6, uh, so you already paid for one, or you need to go ahead and leave your current carrier if you have a Nexus 6 with them. And another drawback I would say is that they're not going to pay any uh, early termination fees associated with whatever carrier you're on if you want to leave to go to Project Fi with your Nexus 6. So you're leaving AT&T and you need to pay an ETF. They're not going to pay that so that you can join Google Fi. Now they may in the future pay that, but as of right now, they're not. And that is what I think is a theme throughout with Project Fi is the future. I think that because of the limitations that there are now, it's really just a Beta. It's a public beta that they want to go ahead and gauge how people are interacting with it or how people use it and what they like and don't like about it. Uh, it is a project for the future. They are looking long term, I feel, at how they can grow it and how they can improve upon it. Right now, they're just leaving it very limited uh, so that only a small amount of people can join. But I do really see them growing it and maybe even somehow incorporating it or including Project Fiber and Project Loon 
to somehow expand coverage or do something with that. That would just really be kind of incredible and amazing. Now, I don't want to get anybody's hopes up because there is no, I don't have secret information or anything like that, but that would just be really cool if they somehow combine these other projects that are sort of related, but not really. And lastly, I just want to quickly mention the switching that Google is going to be having to do with the Nexus 6 since it's using two networks, the Sprint network and uh, T-Mobile network, as well as some Wi-Fi networks. Google has basically said that it's going to have the Nexus 6 be looking for the best network option to provide the end user with the best network uh, wherever they are. Uh, so long as they're in the coverage zone, of course. Uh, so basically, it's going to try to be switching between networks to provide the best coverage depending on where you are. They've said that it's not going to harm battery life or it's not going to influence battery life in a negative way. But I guess that's something that we're going to have to wait and see. But yeah, those are my thoughts on it. Uh, I think it's still really early to tell what's exactly going to happen with it. I don't think it's going to be a project where Google cancels it in just a few years. I think they're really looking for the long term here. Uh, but if you guys have any thoughts of your own be sure to leave them down below uh, I'd love to go ahead and read through them and again there are some links in the description so that you guys can compare pricing and coverage with some other major carriers in the United States but anyway guys that's pretty much gonna end the video if you enjoyed be sure to hit that like button subscribe down there for more and don't forget to follow me on Google Plus Twitter Instagram and snapchat and I will catch you guys in the next one peace and uh, one of you suggested that I do my thoughts on Project Phi, so that's what this video is going to be about now that I have a little bit more time.